Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of the Shot from Adversity podcast. My name is Neus, and I'm going to be your host today. I'm very glad to have with me Isabel Jangudu on the line. Isabel is Head of Global Product Management for Glass Syringes at Shot Pharma. Having a wide background on drug delivery systems, Isa is responsible for global glass profilable syringes portfolio. Hi Isa, nice to have you here. Hello News, nice to be here too. So I say you're ready, let's start Isa. Uh, first question. So, can you provide a brief insight or summary about the topic we'll be elaborating today? I'd like to provide some market insight about the growing needs and requirements for large volume drug delivery solution via the subcutaneous route and the combination of a large volume syringe with an auto injector. Okay, thank you. And could you please tell us why this combination is of relevance? The auto-injector devices are a copac combination of a large volume syringe filled with a predefined high volume drug dose and a spring activated device assembled together to ensure injection at first try of a full medication dose. Both large volume syringe and the spring activated device are very important for patients in their self-injection journey because this combination without a doubt is helping their compliance and adherence to their therapies and is also reducing the number of injections. Besides, many drugs in large volume self-injection therapies have proven to be well tolerated by patients up to 3 ml and very effective in subcutaneous administration in terms of pharmacokinetics performance. Okay, thank you. Understood. Um, what is the main driver for this transition or this development, Isa? The main driver is the medication cost reduction requirement, making taking subcutaneous medication at home instead of hospital and clinical environment more economically attractive. This trend is highly supported by different national healthcare systems and healthcare practitioners. Consequently, more patients can receive treatment on time and easily in comparison with regular intravenous therapies or prefill syringe injection in clinical settings. That for sure triggers cost. When it comes to more cost and cost, we are referring to firstly our healthcare system for the healthcare practitioner's additional work, secondly to the patient, their family, and caregivers' cost and effort due to the logistics and time required to plan and attend a mandatory medical appointment for regular IV therapy, and lastly to patient preference for treatment change, meaning less frequent injections but higher volumes for the same disease treatment. Okay. Uh, understood. Could you tell us why key important aspects for the patients, for the different involved systems are now understood and uh, in fact support strongly this driver? The success of 1ml and 2ml syringes in auto-injectors to support the transition from hospital to home therapy has been a very strong driver, and the market regulatory pathway for filing these auto-injectors as medical device class 3 is now clear for all the stakeholders. Additionally, new advancements in drug formulation have enabled to convert large mandatory intravenous injection used in hospital environment into subcutaneous one, which can be self-administered easily by patients or by caregivers in the comfort of their home. Precisely, many high viscosity drug formulations can be now contained in one single syringe in a larger dose. Besides, there are new technologies enabling very easily the opening of the hyperdermic space, which is facilitating the subcutaneous administration of larger medication dose. Well, this sounds very revolutionary and promising. And this transition is not far away in the future, but already starting to take place, Isa? 
Yes, this transition is definitely taking place now because various drug delivery system key stakeholders are interested in finding solutions for subcutaneous injection to administer effectively co-therapies in one single large volume syringe to support the life cycle of drugs moving from two smaller to simultaneous or subsequent injection dose of 1.5 ml or 2.5 ml in one single larger incremental medication dose higher than 3 ml to encourage fast injection of drugs in high dose high volume and to use a patented enzyme technology degrading the urinine into the subcutaneous area temporarily removing a barrier allowing the flow of high volume injections and in the future, we could foresee a change as well from wearable injectors to self-administration by using auto-injectors. Mm -hmm. Does the healthcare system support or maybe even promote in accelerating this switch? Yes, the switch from hospital to home care treatment is very supported by both the healthcare workers and payers, which are healthcare insurances and national healthcare systems, because there are more and more drug candidates that can be used for self injection therapies, avoiding injection by healthcare professionals, and avoiding also patient transport and waiting time for therapy starts and follow ups. And self injection at home is clearly enabling this reduction of healthcare cost, a faster availability to more compliant treatments, the availability of treatment for larger groups of patients, and also patient adherence to self-medication treatment. We have observed that healthcare stakeholders are supporting the auto-injectors use at home due to the decision to transfer hospital injection from vials via IV to PFS with devices and to also transfer hospital injection from vials via syringes to PFS with devices. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that this transition from hospital environment to home care is already taking place. So for our audience and for, to make uh, to have a clear idea, could you provide an example of what kind of medication or diseases will benefit from from this home care medication? Currently, there are already marketed high volume biologic drugs used in large volume administration in therapies and applications for cardiovascular and metabolism, oncology, immunology, neurology, chronic migraine, and also respiratory disease. Okay, not feel very nice. And uh, what is the role of shot pharma in this scenario? For patient safety, it is very crucial in this scenario to ensure all the actors in drug delivery of large volume solutions are well coordinated to design together combined devices and syringe auto injectors for fast and effective market release. Shot Pharma, as a leader in drug delivery system, is working very closely with device manufacturers, fill and finish solution providers, elastomeric and needle manufacturers in order to provide a full integration of the pharma customer drugs into a customizable marketed solution. And their market solutions are suitable for self-injection in the comfort of patient home environment. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Isa. What do you expect or what can we expect to come in the near future? Um, regarding us, Ashot Pharma, we have developed a 5.5 pre-fillable glass syringe as an extension of our Ceric BioPer platform for biologics to answer to the specific therapeutic and patient needs explained before for large subcutaneous injections. And this live volume subcutaneous injection can be easily done by patient via an auto-injector for both biologics and complex biologics. And regarding the market, um, this motivation to propose larger glass syringes to support pharma customers is driven by the various trends explained before and by key upcoming requirements for their drug pipelines for subcutaneous injection. For instance, originally high viscous drugs will be available in the future in optimized self-administration formulation which will have more volumes, but with lower viscous properties. Great, Isa. So um, having heard your, 
your explanations. I thank you very much for taking the time and sharing with us your view and the latest developments around this key shift from hospital to home care medication. Um, I wish you good success and hope to host you soon here in the, in the former university and learn more about the innovations you and your team are driving. And I for sure thank the audience for hearing this podcast. Take care and bye bye. Thank you.